Hello, I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and you're watching Your Health on Tech. More than 38 million people in the United States have diabetes. Some of these people will require insulin, and daily injections can be a burden. What if I told you there's an innovative way to receive insulin that reduces the burden? I had the opportunity a few months ago to travel to San Diego and meet Jim Hollingshead, who at that time was the CEO of Insulet, a medtech company that is reshaping how insulin is delivered. I wanted to hear about the culture of innovation that exists there and how they think about better ways to manage insulin delivery, especially in an industry where they have to compete against some big players. How do they use tech to improve outcomes? And what's Insulet's vision of diabetes care, both now and in the future? Well, Jim, thanks for joining me today. John, it's a real pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Insulet has been at the forefront of diabetes technology for years. And you and I were talking earlier how the diabetes space is very competitive. How do you create this culture of innovation when there are many big players out there that you have to compete against? It's a great question, John. It is, it's a very competitive space. And the answer for Insulet has always been what does the patient need? What does the person living with diabetes need? And that, that goes all the way back to the founding of the company where um, there was a venture capitalist whose son got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And as often the case, you know, the family will see what their child has to go through, which is finger sticks and measuring blood glucose and figuring out how to fill a, a, a syringe or using an, an insulin pen, carrying all that stuff with you, dozens and dozens of calculations that you have to make all day long. And they said, there has to be a simpler way to do this. And so all the way back from the founding of the company 25 years ago, you know, literally on the back of a cocktail napkin, the concept for our core technology, the Omnipod, was born. And so the whole idea was, how can we simplify that experience for people living with diabetes and also deliver great clinical outcomes, great control? So push diabetes into the background, push the diabetes, the burden of diabetes into the background of everybody's life but deliver for them what they need, which is great control of their blood glucose because of all the things that can happen if you don't control your blood glucose. And that's been our ethos for 25 years. What is the need of the patient? How can we simplify life for people with diabetes while also delivering fantastic care and fantastic outcomes? And when we put the patient in the center like that, there's always a new problem to solve. No matter where the technology is going, no matter where the market is going, no matter what competitors are doing, there's always another problem we can solve for patients, and that's how we think about it. Well, how do you engage patients? How do you figure out exactly what they need and what that experience is going to be for them? Yeah, I, it's a great question. We're, we work with patients all the time, and in fact, one of the most, one of the really most rewarding parts of my job, and I think of for all of us at Insulate, is the feedback we get from patients. I mean, it's really moving. You'll see, I'll get choked up when I talk about it, you know. So, um, but you know, we're obviously working with patients. We do, we do a lot of patient research. We engage with our patients. We engage with them directly in research. We engage with them in social media. We do patient panels. Um, most of our influencers are obviously, you know, our potters are our patients and users themselves. So we're constantly in a back and forth with patients about how they use the product and so on. So really the, the beginning of the company was looking at the problem set of what we call multiple daily injections. If you have type one diabetes, you're injecting yourself several times a day. There's just a lot of sort of work steps that you have to do. So the first step for us was, how can we innovate something that's much simpler? And the Omnipod itself as a platform is so much simpler, and I'm sure we can talk about that. But as we've, as we've brought that product to market, it's always been, what's the incremental innovation that meets the unmet needs? So we're pushing the horizon of simplicity, but we know there's still things we can do. And so we interact with patients so frequently in the real world, in research, uh, in panels, and that patient input is now at the center of how we run the business. But what about the belief for some people that think innovation is going to come from the big companies, right? They have a lot of dollars. They've been there a long time. But here you are, a smaller company, 25 years old, which is great, but might be young in yeah. terms of med tech, in, in terms of not a startup. Why is the innovation coming from the smaller companies in a field where we've seen innovation. So as we talked about at the beginning, it's hard to compete in some ways. How are you gonna make it better? Well, it's, it's a really, it's a fascinating question. And I mean, there's multiple ways I can answer that, but I would say that 
being a small, we're a small company that got big, right? And, um, and so we've had kind of a, a startup ethic for a long time in the business. But coming with a totally novel approach, which is to you know, create a wearable, disposable um, delivery system for your insulin. Here it is, here's the Omnipod, all right? So this is Omnipod 5. This holds three days of insulin. You put it on your arm, you put it on your stomach, it's very discreet, wearable, disposable, waterproof. You can take a shower with this. You can go swimming with this, right? So that was the core concept, remove the injections and give people something that's really simple and discreet. And we, we competed on the market just with the form factor, just with the convenience. And this is for anyone for who needs insulin. Anybody who needs insulin. In fact, we just got, I'm sure we'll get into this, but we just got a label extension, as we would say, for people living with type 2 who need insulin. And that's uh, millions of people that will benefit from this product. An Omnipod 5 connects to a continuous glucose monitor, and it, it takes the data from the continuous glucose monitor, a CGM, it says, where's your blood glucose now, and where is it going? And then in this pod is an algorithm that predicts without anything changing, where will your blood glucose be in 60 minutes? And it makes a decision as whether to give you a little trickle dose, a, a micro bolus as we call it, of insulin. Mm -hmm. Keeps your blood, you know, your blood glucose really tightly in range, all under your t-shirt, right? And so completely discreet. And, and so we were competing just on form factor for years. And when we launched automated dosing, which in the industry is called automated insulin delivery or AID, it turned the market on its ear. So it, it's been a horse race for years where we were sort of the second place, third place player competing on form factor. And then when we launched Omnipod 5, we turned the market on its ear. And we've emerged out of that horse race as the very clear market leader. So we know in type one, patients are insulin deficient. So they have to have insulin. In type two, many patients need insulin for better control. But there's this resistance by many patients. Sometimes it's the doctors who yeah. are resistant and hold insulin out as, if you don't do this or that, then that's yeah. what's gonna to happen to you and it's perceived in a pejorative way. Is this going to change or is it changing how both patients and physicians think about insulin in patients with type two diabetes? Type 2 diabetes is different from type 1, 20 year progression. As you progress, for years, doctors have been saying to patients, listen, I don't want to have to put you on insulin. And the question is why? And there's two big reasons doctors have been reluctant to introduce insulin. The first one is they're worried about hypoglycemia. So the risk of dosing yourself with insulin is that you'll drive your blood glucose too low. So that's called hypoglycemia. That's the thing that drives people into the ER if they're living with diabetes. If they overdose on insulin, they end up in the ER, it can be life-threatening. And so doctors historically have been reluctant to leave to patients their own dosing of insulin, right? They don't want to take the risk for the patient, they don't want to take the risk for themselves. Although we know too high blood sugar too is going to send them to the ER. Hyperglycemia, really mm -hmm. high mm -hmm. hyperglycemia can also yeah. send you to the ER, right? That's true, and so that's why you need tight range, right? You need to replicate the range that a, that a functioning pancreas would produce, right? Um, and so, so physicians have been worried about hypoglycemia, and physicians have been worried about weight gain because one of the things that happens for people when they start to dose insulin is they start to put on weight. And for a type two patient, what's going on is their, their overweight or their obesity is actually contributing to the progression of type two diabetes. So doctors have been treating insulin as a, as a therapy of last resort. The beauty of the secure T2D study, which is delivering insulin with Omnipod 5, was that we showed, first of all, with Omnipod 5 therapy, there was no increase in, in hypoglycemia. That's one of, the, one of the benefits of our dosing algorithm. It's very good on hypoglycemia in general across the whole insulin-needing population, but no increase in hypoglycemia, so it removes that risk. And then very limited weight gain. And the weight gain only happened in very severe diabetes, um, which is not unusual, actually, right? And so, so we've removed in that study, those are two little nuggets in the study, those things that physicians have been hesitant on. But really what we produced was results that showed um, no matter where you are in your progression of, di of type 2 diabetes, if your insulin, if your blood glucose is, is out of control and your A1Cs are above 7, you benefit from it. And that was true for um, across all of our racial groups, across all genders, across the entire age range of the study. And it was true, importantly, for people who were using other drugs, so especially for GLP-1s. If you were on a GLP-1, you had the same benefit from Omnipod 5 therapy as if you weren't. And so the results of the study are really phenomenal, and we've just published this study. We presented it last year at the American Diabetes Association. We've just published a study. We're going to use that evidence to go and help doctors see that if a patient is uncontrolled, 
and they need insulin therapy, this is the way to get it. It's so simple, it's easy to use. Patients, you know, everybody in the study wanted to stay on it. You just hit on one of the things I wanted to ask you about. I wanna ask you two things that everybody is talking about. Uh, and the first is GLP-1s, right. right? So are we even gonna be talking about diabetes five years from now? Are GLP-1s gonna solve all these issues? What are your thoughts about GLP-1s and type 2 diabetes? Yeah, GLP-1s are terrific drugs. They help people who live with type 2 diabetes manage their A1Cs, they get their blood glucose down, they improve control, they also help with weight loss. And so that upstream dynamic of your overweight contributing to progression, so they help with that. But we also know from um, clinical data and from big studies of claims data that GL the effect of GLP-1s doesn't last forever. It will typically last, if, if a patient's willing to stay on that drug, what, what most of the data shows, and we have this, we've published some of these studies on our, on our website for anybody who's interested, mostly the effect lasts somewhere between 36 and 48 months. And those if are studies for diabetes? Those are, those are for people with diabetes yeah. um, using GLP-1s. Mostly the effect has a diminishing return. So when you start a GLP-1, your A1C comes down, and then it creeps back up over time. So over time, it's not a cure is the point. It delays progression. And they're great drugs, right? And so it delays progression. Um, and, and so the other thing about GLP-1s is for whatever reason, people don't tend to stay on them over that entire span. Um, you know, so we know from claims data that more than half of people will drop off of a GLP-1 in the first year or so, right? So they don't get that 36, 48 months for whatever, it might be cost, might be side effects, might be whatever. But with both of those pieces of data and the analysis that we, we shared with the, with the market last year, what we found was that if you were put on a GLP-1, you were more likely in the next 12 months to also go on insulin therapy. And you know, we, can, we can theorize as to why, but more likely to go on insulin therapy. And if you dropped off of a GLP-1, you were even more likely to go on insulin therapy. And so what that says to us is that you know, somebody who has uncontrolled blood sugars, who's gone through the path of all the progression, the oral drugs, the other drugs, the other injectables, and then GLP-1s, and they're still uncontrolled, they need insulin therapy, right? And the, the Omnipod 5 is such a simple and easy to use way to get it. The second big topic I have to ask about is AI. How is AI changing how you do business? Yeah. We, we see so much opportunity for AI, and we already use AI in multiple places in our business. And so, for example, um, the algorithm in the Omnipod 5 is very, it's a predictive algorithm. It's based on big data, you know, machine learning, and so on. So we're already deploying AI in, in that part of the business. Um, we are already deploying AI in things like um, some of our customer service portals. You know, we've got large language models. We do things like that. So there's tons of places that AI is going to make a difference um, in, in business in general and for us. But what we see is every single Omnipod 5 patient is cloud connected. It's one of the really novel things. So if I go back to our business, you know, we talk about our competitive moats, John. And, you know, our first competitive moat is just the pod, right? It's been proven very difficult for other people to recreate that wearable, disposable, high quality, But you high did safety. it. We did it, and we did it 20 years ago, and we've okay. built on it ever since, right? So, so very hard, that's a moat for us. It enables a moat for us, which is pay-as-you-go economics, right? So no big, you're not buying a piece of durable equipment that you're wearing your belt. You're getting pods, you're paying for them as you use them. In the US, that also means pharmacy channel access, which is really easy. And then the next moat for us is gonna be data, because we have more than 350,000 Omnipod 5 users right now. Every one of those users uh, is con connected to the cloud. And so what we get, we get to see the whole population's usage patterns. Think about the power of that. Think about the millions of days of usage data we have. It, we can de-identify it and we can look for patterns. And what we'll do with that is we'll use AI and machine learning to make the entire customer experience better. That is a powerful legacy indeed. Jim, thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure, John. Thank you very much for the opportunity.